So, anyways, listen, we've got a guest coming up. She's one of our favorite congresswomen. Nan Hayworth is joining us all the way from New York. Nan, welcome to the George Jargonsy Show. George, great to be with you always. Well, I got to tell you, Nan, I know you've had a busy week uh, in Florida, but you've had a heck of a fight going on back there in, in New York. Oh, you're absolutely right. We're in a swing district, and in fact, I've been in our district the whole time. We had a convention watching party last night in the city of Newburgh, and we had dozens and dozens of friends who came to join us, which was great. We had a we had a wonderful time. We've got a lot of support here in the Hudson Valley, and I will say, uh, you know, that, that personal service uh, as a representative really uh, does have an impact because we're getting a positive reception everywhere, but it's it's every day you got to go out there and represent the people you serve. Well, Nan, i got to tell you, you know, my friends in the city in New York told me that your speech last night at the Torches on the Hudson uh, really was uh, was uh, uh, strong about getting you know getting the country back on track. Oh, we it's you know we, Paul Ryan said it, Chris Christie said it, of course uh, our nominee Governor Romney said it. We have an incredible opportunity. We we have to honor what this country was founded on the principles you were just talking about, George, respect for the citizen, respect for the individual, respect for the rights granted, not by man, but by God. And that's what we have to enshrine again. And we have a historic opportunity this year, and we will not lose it. You know, Nan, what I'm so concerned about, though, is I feel very strongly uh, that Decisions for schools should be made in the towns or areas where the schools are. Uh, as with, more. as with so many other things that have somehow been, uh, taken and stolen from the people and, and moved to Washington. Yep. You're having the same fight though. I mean, you've got George Soros' son and a, a big super PAC there has basically oh, yeah. moved into your backyard. They're not from <laughs> your area. But they're fighting you to try to get your seat, even though they're not, they have they have absolutely no interest in your area. All they want to do right. is control the voting power of your seat. And I mean, you're being outgunned a couple dollars to every dollar you're putting in it. Well, it's true. There's a lot of money arrayed against us, George. And the amazing thing is, and what I love is that George Soros' son Jonathan has a super PAC against super PACs. Now, does this make any sense at all? I mean, you know, so somehow he's fighting the concept that there's too much money in politics by throwing a ton of money into politics. Well, if, if yeah. Jonathan, so if Jonathan Soros is anything like his father, uh, yeah. George Soros has had a very good knack at when there is trouble and there is strife. Uh, right. He actually makes money whether it works out or doesn't typically right. uh, the way he positions himself. So actually what you're saying yes. uh, is very much in line with the with the Soros family. What bothers me, though, is you have done an incredible job serving your district. Uh, you have been a, an incredible addition uh, to the House. Uh, you've brought all that wealth and experience as a doctor, as a businesswoman and as a mother, uh, yeah. which which, frankly, we, we need up there. Oh, and people have responded to that on the ground. Uh, Mr. Soros' money will not sway the people in this district who know me. And thank God we have many friends uh, who who have stepped up and are stepping up. But it is there. There are uh, there are forces arrayed against the power of the people and against the power of the individual. And it's up to us and to voices like yours, George, and, you know, thank goodness for the strength of your voice. Uh, voices like ours are what will carry the day, and, and it's a matter of just constant, dedicated effort. Well, you, you know, Nan, I agree with you that the truth usually sort of seeps up to the top and people figure yeah. it out. The, the problem is, is you know, the election is just three months away. And will the sure. truth come out before then? I mean, they're out there spreading lies about you that you want to end Medicare as we know. Oh, it. I know. Which right. is which is which is ridiculous. I mean, the yes. fact is, is Obama's Health and Human Service Secretary said that you have the mutual goal of strengthening Medicare program right. for all beneficiaries. You're a doctor, exactly. and, right. and you you haven't put your hands on anybody who has Medicare today. You haven't said no. anything about taking any benefits from them. If anything, no. you you've been uh, proactive at helping them. Right, right. I am saving Medicare, as is every. Republican who voted, and virtually all of us did, voted for our House 
budget plan, not only in 2011, but in 2012, the path to prosperity, which respects Medicare, which replaces the funds that were taken from it, that will be taken from it by that, that massive over taking of health care, that, that massive right. government plan that will not work for the American people. Uh, Congresswoman... We're going to go to break. We're going to we're going to hold you over though through the break. We'll be back with Na- Congresswoman Nan Hayworth. Do not touch that dial. It could cost you money. Jarcusy. To the George Jarcusy show where we invest to thrive and we hedge to survive. We have joining us today Nan Hayworth, Congresswoman Nan Hayworth, and uh, she is a congresswoman from New York. Nan, thanks for staying with us. You know, I've got to ask you a question. You know, when you've got these people that are coming out of uh, out of Manhattan to come up to your district, coming out of district funding that, you know, don't they have a problem connecting with the people of the community? I mean, you live in that community. You, you, you spent a lot of your life in that community. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, how, how do they connect with those people? Well, it's hard to do. The Democratic candidate has uh, never lived in the district except that he the claims now to live in the district, and I'm using gigantic air quotes around that because he bought a very tiny place in one of our villages. He lives in Manhattan, and he has a weekend home that is not in our district. So how can you compare that to 24 years of living actually in the Hudson Valley, of having two sons here, raising them here, caring for patients here for 16 years, uh, being among the people here in all parts of our district, uh, towns, villages, small cities, uh, for three years solidly and more, uh, you know, on the ground as a candidate and then a member of Congress. You can't compare it, and they can't relate. You know, what a lot of people don't realize, Nan, is so many people are jaded about uh, politicians. And, and you know what? Rightfully so. Yeah. I mean, there are some right. politicians out there uh, that got into it so that they could uh, uh, move up the ladder, could make a living out of it, you know, you know do a lot of things. Ex- in, and not that they wouldn't serve the people, but their right. first priority wasn't to serve the people. You're just right. the opposite. I mean, you were basically done. Your kids, kids are raised. Yeah. Uh, right. you, you've been very successful at, at your career as a medical doctor. Yeah. Uh, you. you're, you're married. I mean, you, you, you came out of basically retirement to serve your country because you thought things were broken is what you told me. Well, that's, and we all know we need people with common sense, with life experience in our elected offices and that is why I, I ran it as a doctor. I felt, I, you know, and as, yes, as a mother, as someone who had uh, started and, and run her own and grown her own small business, my, my little practice, uh, I felt I, I hoped I could have something to offer. And, you know, George, there is, you have to have an attitude of uh, appropriate humility about all of this. You know, I'm there to serve the people, uh, not the other way around. Government should exist to be a help to our people, not to become the reason they work, not to become, you know, the majority shareholder in their lives. And that's a distinction that we are at great risk of losing in this country. And that and that was why I ran. Well, you know, Nan, I mean, you've only been up there just a short, a short period. But the fact is, you know, I had a show last month. Uh, I was out at Freedom Fest in uh, July. And that yeah. week actually was a very interesting week because if you worked from January 1 through that third week of July, yes. that all that work, all that money actually goes to the government. So starting okay. at that week, I was at Freedom Fest going forward. The rest of the money you make the rest of the year actually is for your family and, and, and for, your, for what your needs are. The, I mean, that seems <laughs> ridiculous. Now, Huh? For, now. For, for, for now, for now, yeah, for now. But you know, January first, it's going to increase. Yeah. Uh, it, so look, we we know you're fighting up there. You know, the biggest concern I have is uh, that you know you're fighting so much money up there. You know, I really yeah, am concerned sure. about that. W- what are the people in the district? Uh, you, you know, I mean, this guy moves in out of nowhere. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, how can he run up there? That's a yeah. that's an area that's fiscally conservative. How, how does he yeah. get get by up there? Uh, with a president that's been an economic disaster. Disaster. 
answer. Well, George, people here are smart. And it, in this beautiful Hudson Valley in the state of New York, uh, and we have a governor whom they distinguish from President Obama because Governor Cuomo has actually started to make moves toward uh, a, a much smarter, better uh, budget and, and more efficiently running the, the state government, which is great because we desperately need it. We have a high-tax, high-regulation state. People are moving out. They can't afford to stay here. They can't afford to live here. And they understand that when we have a federal government that takes the same attitude, raise taxes on hardworking people, increase red tape, increase regulations, make it even harder that dollars are going to move out of the United States, and they are. 2.5 million, uh, Congresswoman Hayworth, 2.5 million people have left New York. Right. Uh, over regulation and taxation exactly. uh, in the last. I mean, that's a that's unbelievable. The exodus uh, there, terrible. and you've got, and the state of New York has so much to offer. Yes. Um, it it's, does. It's amazing. Well, listen. Thank you so much for making time. I know it's been a very hectic week there uh, with yeah. the, with the RNC, and I know you've got a heck of a fight on your hand. You're you're fighting a pile of money there in uh, yes. in New York, but I I know that uh, you're you're a great congresswoman. You've well, served your district you, well, and uh, we need you to win that race up there. Thank you, George. Well, people visit us at hayworth.house.gov. They can find out how they might be able to help. And I All thank right. you for letting me come on the show. All right, let's do that website one more time. Oh, Hayworth. I'm Hayworth. Sorry, I just gave my I just I just gave my house uh, web address, which you're welcome to look at. But my campaign site that that was my mistake is nanhayworth.com. NanHayworth.com. Go there. Yes. Uh, make a donation. If you, you know, she's in a good fight up there. It'd be helpful if you make a donation. Thank you so you much, bet. Congressman Hayworth. Thanks, George. Anytime. Well, all right. Listen, uh, we've got a, we've got a caller right now. We've,